everyone, Steve here. Hope you're all well. Uh, welcome to what hopefully be an awesome lesson for you. And what we're going to do in this lesson is look at writing our own Chan inspired string skipping riffs. That's quite a mouthful to say. And uh, even if you're not a fan of Chan, this will be quite useful for you, so stick around. So, what do I mean by string skipping? So, it's where we're not following a linear pattern, we're actually jumping over some strings. For example, <coughs> So there, I'm not following a linear pattern. Yeah, as I said, just jumping over the strings. It's something uh, when you develop can sound really cool. So if we want to write our own Chan inspired string skipping riffs, then we need to work out how Chan potentially approach this. So I've chosen an example from the song Fluffy by them. What we'll do is we'll take a look at an example and then we'll dissect it afterwards. So here's how it sounds. <laughs> the example there as you can see in the tab and you may have seen in the video the string skipping is occurring mostly from jumping from the low E and then the filling in little riffs in between it now we know that the string skipping between the low E and then writing some little riffs in between it we need to work out potentially what tools they're using to write these kind of things. And what we can do is look for evidence in the part itself. So here's all the notes from the part. And as you can see, a lot of notes there follow on from each other, which gives evidence for the use of scales more than arpeggios. The next thing you can do is look at the key, which is F sharp major. And then we can look at the scales that are in F sharp major. So I went through this trouble for you and then eventually worked out. So here's the F sharp major modes. And if we take our chan piece and put it over the top, so the red notes here, you can see that the notes match nicely to F sharp major modes. So modes are maybe something you've not seen before. So don't worry, this is a good place to start learning how to use them. So I made this handy little chart here, which you can find over on my website. And it can get you on your way to learning the modes. So you can print it out, uh, laminate it like I did. So now we know that Chan potentially are using these modes to write their own string skipping riffs, we can do the same. So I recommend starting off a bit more simpler and then incorporating more and more modes as we go along. So in this lesson we'll just skip stick to using uh, two modes and what we use in this lesson is the Ionian, the first mode, and the second mode, the Dorian mode. Here are the modes on their own. <laughs> So there's the Ionian starting from G. And the Dorian starting from A. And once you get used to them, then you can combine the two. So go up one. And come down the other. So now you familiarize yourselves with these two shapes, it's time to start trying to write something. So a great way of approaching this is to just keep noodling in these two shapes and see what you come up with. And this is also great for developing your own style. You're seeing where all the slides are, where all the bends are, and seeing what runs you can come up with. So for example, I would do something like this. <laughs> So take your time like that and just keep noodling and see what you're coming up with. And then after you've become comfortable and familiar with them, then we can start to try and uh, make our own Chan ins inspired riffs, right? So remember back to the fluffy example, the jumping from the low E and then putting little riffs in between. So this is what this is what we can use as a guide for writing our own piece. So the next thing we want to do is construct some kind of melody, right? So a good guide for this is to whatever note we're starting on. So let's say we're starting from the G. <coughs> is then to come up with the what pattern we're going to hit in between. So remember, we're using the two shapes. So we can use the low E, those notes from the low E. 
So next thing we need to do is come up with some melody. So a quick guide for this would be to have a starting note, of course. And then write some little bits in between. And then have some other notes in between that as our pattern. And a good thing to do is we can have something that ascends and then descends, or something that descends and slightly ascends. Uh, these are just general ideas. And then at the end of the riff, we can come back to the tonic, so meaning uh, notes that are in with, within the tonic chord. So if we were playing G major as a tonic. We try and come back to that G or G, B, D are our notes that make up the chord of G major. So if you come back to any of those notes at the end of the riff, it's going to sound quite resolved. But this is uh, just a general guide. You don't have to do any of that. So this is what I did for my two examples. I used that short melody guide I just gave you there to write two pieces. Uh, it took me quite a while to do these, so be patient if you're not getting anything straight away and it's something you're not that happy with. And try to keep it simple and then build up, build up as you go along. So let's take a look at my first example here. With that example there, so I had this. So I came back to the tonic note at the end there. So that's what my uh, melody was based around, was those, those five notes there. And it's quite a simple one. But I quite like the idea. And I did the same again, but this time it's slightly more complex. <laughs> So that example is slightly more complex, and this time it's the descending and then ascending melody instead. So they were the notes I used to jump from for the piece of music there. So uh, hopefully that's enough for you to get you on your way to writing your own Chan style riffs. Um, I know there's been quite a lot in this lesson, so as you get used to those two modes, then you can start to branch out and incorporate all of the modes within the piece. And that's where you can start to write those really elaborate kind of chun riffs with a lot of tapping in as well and uh, a lot of sweeps and stuff in there too. You can come up with some really cool stuff but limit yourself just to keeping in within the two shapes at first and then branch out and you know, use three shapes and four shapes and try and use all kinds of different shapes. And that way not only will you remember them but you also have your own little cool ideas that you come up with and it develops your own style as well. So that's it for this lesson guys, uh, I hope you found it quite useful, I put a lot of effort into this lesson so hopefully it's been quite useful for you. Um, please leave a comment if you're unsure about anything and if you've enjoyed the lesson please give it a big thumbs up and share the hell out of it. As always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, bye bye.